Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be answering some of your biochemistry questions that you guys have asked me and just talking about some things that I probably would have told my younger self in college just about biochemistry and internships that I feel like I didn't really understand or didn't really know about until now. So I have my smoothie. I'm ready to talk about some things. This looks gross, but I promise you it tastes good. In this smoothie, I did add the superfood greens powder that if you watch my videos, um, you'll see that I tried a few weeks ago. Um, I actually really like it. I feel like it really helps with digestion and everything. Be sure to use the link down below that I provide and you can get 25% off of your purchase. No obligation or check out my video if you want to hear more about that. Totally off topic, but anyway, just thought I'd mention it. Okay, on to the biochemistry stuff. So just a little bit about me. I am a senior chemistry student at Salisbury University. I'm technically not a biochemistry major. I am a chemistry major focusing on biochemistry ACS certification. So basically I'm doing all of the chemistry classes in addition to biochemistry classes and then I'm also getting a biology minor. So I'm going to be trying to answer some of the questions that people ask me in my biochemistry internship vlog that I posted. So I'm just going to answer some of those and yes, I'll talk more about things that I want to mention also as well. So one person said, do you have any advice for finding a research internship in undergrad? One of my biggest things that I wish I would have known to do is the summer before junior year is to apply for internships. Even though you're a sophomore or you only have sophomore experience, I think it's very likely that you can get an internship either at your school or at another school. Mainly if I were to go back, I probably would have applied to especially banking on my school's internship the summer before junior year and then the summer before senior year to get an internship like an REU at another college. Just knowing that you are going to be in a different lab in a completely different environment I think is really going to help you out with learning different techniques, learning like the way schools do things a little bit differently. And if you do an REU at another school it gives you a chance to maybe try something out that you didn't really think that you'd be interested in but since it was an REU you kind of can apply to a bunch of different things and they'll place you in a project at times so you might be in a project that's out of your comfort zone but I suggest to go for it especially if it's in a different school or if it's in a little bit more of a prestigious school because that's going to look really good when you're interviewing for grad school or just applying for any job or anything. And so I feel like for me the thing that I didn't know was I didn't even know that certain internships existed or how to look them up. So just some things that I recommend is to look at like literally Google search REUs at whatever university. If you're looking into going to grad school at certain schools, which I know as a sophomore or junior you don't really know where you want to go, but if you just kind of look up some good research schools or even some that are nearby um, just look up REUs and if they offer summer internships or even maybe winter break like I know right now I think it's probably hard because a lot of people had summer internships for this summer and I'm pretty sure most things are being canceled I know at least in Maryland there are I would see if maybe there's gonna be any winter internships and see if you can just at least get in contact with some professors to see if they would offer maybe an exception or maybe take you for the next summer for sure because you are denied for the summer. But anyway, I'm going to put up on the screen and also link down below some links that I suggest that you take a look at. They will provide full travel, full funding, and they can go from paying you maybe $3,500 uh, for the summer up to like $6,000, $6,500 for the entire summer and that's really good for an internship. So. Definitely check out the links down below if you want to see just some possible research opportunities. I know right now with the virus and everything it's probably a little bit hard but if you are a sophomore it's not too late and if you're a junior it's not too late to just take a look at some opportunities and they also at some places have grad school opportunities and things also listed on the website so be sure to check those out. Are you preparing the cure for corona? <laughs> Honestly, if someone asked me, hey, we need a research intern to research the coronavirus, I would be all over that. So if you're a recruiter watching this video, please hire me. 
this one says hi i'm majoring in biochemistry next year is it possible to get a job in bioinformatics straight out of undergrad or do you believe a master's is needed so definitely at my school i feel like the weakness is bioinformatics in our department it's pretty hard because i am chemistry and we're already taking a lot of chemistry classes and biology classes to cover the biochem major. But if you want to do bioinformatics, see if there is a bioinformatics track that you can take because I think that it really helps to get to know either um, some computer programming and higher math along with like some bioinformatics classes. I really wish I could have taken a bioinformatics class, but unfortunately with my class schedule, I couldn't. I realize I'm not answering the question. I'll get back to it. But anyway, bioinformatics is a great thing to get into if you're really interested in it. But unfortunately, I'm not very well educated on bioinformatics. So I feel like I can't really answer that completely. I have seen some bioinformatics jobs, but it does seem like you need some sort of background and at least basic programming and some bioinformatics classes, which I didn't have. So I think that there are some basic um, bioinformatics jobs, but it does help if you have the masters. But I would also look into seeing if maybe you get a job and they will pay for your masters. Again, I'm not really completely sure on that, but I would definitely check that out because sometimes for master's programs, they will pay for you to get it if you start in their internship or if you start like in a very basic position. Do you know what the salary for the research intern with the PhD? So, so I'm thinking this um, question is asking if you have a PhD, but then you wouldn't be an intern. So. If you're talking about it, or if you're doing research and you're trying to get your PhD, I noticed that around me a lot of the stipends are from twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. It's kind of a set standard on the lowest that a PhD candidate can get paid, but also it fluctuates every year. So if you go to get your PhD and they say your starting stipend is going to be thirty thousand um, dollars as your first year of a PhD candidate. They reevaluate every year, so it is possible that it goes down, but most likely it goes up if their program gets better and they get more funding. But if you're just a research intern like I was, and I was just an undergrad, I got paid $3,500 for the summer. I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to say that. My friend did another internship, I think at Johns Hopkins, and got a lot more than that. So it really depends on which college you get your internship at and, um, what their funding is for that summer and so you really just have to look into it and then see on the application if it says how much it is or if it's like oh we pay you five thousand dollars which includes like your travel expenses your housing or if that's just the stipend money okay this one says do biochemists get paid well how much do you make in salary i don't know what to take in college i want to make a good income and live comfortably in the future me as well <laughs> just like any job you start off at kind of a base salary and depending on which direction you go into your salary will vary but i did notice that a lot of biochemistry jobs i haven't really seen any lower than thirty thousand. again i can't speak for everything because i've only looked at like a select area and select jobs the reason why thirty thousand is pretty much the lowest i've noticed is because even internships which are like PhD candidates, but you're not getting your PhD. Um, but you can be working at, with grad students and almost as a grad student, but you're not in the PhD school. That normally pays, like the stipend is around 30000 like I said. So I noticed that like mostly you get paid what a PhD candidate get, would get paid because you're doing similar research and similar hours. And since they get paid around like $30,000 with benefits, that's what I've noticed is like basically the lowest I think that I've seen. This one says, do you have supervisors that check up on you? And also, how do you know that you will be working, what you will be working on? Do they know in advance with all the steps and everything? I don't know if I address this in my vlog, but pretty much we would just go in at, I think it was 8.30 a.m. We had to be there and 8.30 or 9. It was pretty casual. I think that really just depends on your professor and who is in charge of your lab. He would give us basically the layout of our entire day and he would say, hey, I want this done before lunch and this done after lunch. Yeah, most of the time if it's something new, like the day before, he would give us the protocol to read over and then the next day we would come in and have to kind of know what we're doing, but he would still explain things. Again, I think that depends on the professor because if 
you're getting a job that you know you should probably have a little bit more experience or an internship where they ask you if you have experience in something then they might be a little less um they might not walk you through as much as my professor did but i feel like my professor is pretty awesome he pretty much walked me through everything that i needed to know so it wasn't really stressful as far as needing to like know new things and plus a lot of undergrad internships they know that this is your first exposure to a lot of different things in the lab they probably know that you need to be shown how to do some of these things unless it's just you know general chemistry things that you learn your first year of college well i feel like there wasn't that many questions but hopefully i answered them well and helped somebody out there if you guys have similar questions i feel like those were questions that i actually would ask if i was a sophomore or junior in college and i didn't really know what i was doing i feel like certain colleges are a little bit better or worse about showing undergrads like what we need to do in order to get a good internship or what we need to do to prepare for you know grad school and what looks good on a resume and on our CV and everything like that so if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any other more questions other more <laughs> If you have any other questions about chemistry or anything at all, please be sure to leave them down below in the comments. And thanks for watching my video and things are crazy. The world is crazy right now. So just stay safe. We'll get through this and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Doop.